one of the bright spots for uh, the global economy in 2022 has actually been India. We've spent a lot of time talking about Europe being on the brink of a recession, if not in a recession, U.S. growth moderating, China, obviously the numbers came out this morning, very, very low, only three percentage point. But India really stands out. Uh, what is your outlook for, for growth this year? We are very optimistic and very positive on India. I think there are multiple things going for India. One, of course, is a very stable political environment and very forward-looking government that is uh, taking the hard decisions and making the infrastructure ready for being able to power India. So very clear vision and a very strong execution focus. There are other elements of it also. India is one of probably the only country uh, that's going through this energy transition without having to go through a transition but building out into the new. And that's the same when it comes to manufacturing. It's the same when it comes to telecom. So India is building out something new into a new technology era, into a new element. And we don't have the issue of a legacy interest, uh, infrastructure that we need to get out of. So there is a, you know, a lot of optimism. Uh, the global economy and India's size has ensured that there is enough capital available. So you combine the demographics, the demand side, and the capital availability I think the upside is significant. Of course, it needs to be executed uh, carefully, but uh, it is there uh, for realization. Very positive macro story there. How much is the government's emphasis on infrastructure going to positively impact a firm like yours? Uh, significantly. So if you look at, uh, one is, of course, the physical infrastructure, but we uh, deal more on the digital infrastructure yes. side and the financial infrastructure. So the government's uh, approach on the financial infrastructure build out and the digital infrastructure build out, we have been very strong partners towards that. And we participate both in the actual infrastructure build out and also the downstream of applications and other industries that get uh, energized by this infrastructure uh, build out. Uh, financial infrastructure, in fact, payments infrastructure in India is probably now uh, you know, world class and second to none, in fact, far ahead of many that we see in developed countries. So uh, many of the other elements of the digital stack, the approach to the digital stack as something that is a shared asset that's made available to the private sector, that's also quite unique in the way India has gone about it. It's interesting, we just had the CEO of Ericsson on and he was talking about how India are doing so well with 5G adoption as well. One thing I want to talk about with you is this um, phenomenon of, of onshoring. It feels as though in the last couple of years, a lot of countries have started rethinking their supply chains, thinking about how they can be more resilient to potential future shocks. How does that affect a business like yours, which of course is, is, is reliant on this offshoring phenomenon? So if you think about it from a manufacturing capacity versus a services capacity or a technology capacity basis, a manufacturing capacity is a kind of a, a fixed pie game where there is a movement from here to there depending on what the geopolitical situation is, whereas the technology capacity is completely unbounded. So if you look at any of the stats in the developing markets, the demand to capacity available, we are off by like millions that uh, in terms of what the nature of the capacity requirement is, the volume as well as the nature. So I believe that considering the significant expansion in the overall demand for technology capacity and services capacity, uh, it's a growing pie uh, syndrome. And the shift from one to the other is not a very material element on the services side, unlike what's happening on the manufacturing side. And what is the pipeline looking like uh, from your customer's perspective? Is it strong for this year, or do you get the feeling that demand is dwindling, it just mirroring what's happening with the macro economy? The pipeline is strong. But the trick there is that it's the pipeline that is strong. Uh, we have seen a bit of uh, slowdown over the last couple of quarters in actual decision making. And uh, that is a very, uh, very regional story. Uh, it's different in the US, it's different in the uh, European markets. Uh, the US, I think, is more of a, a pause rather than a major issue. Uh, that's, we are optimistic about US. We believe that uh, by the middle of the year, uh, we should see a much significant uh, bounce back there. The European story is a bit more dependent on external events playing out, the geopolitical situation, the overall the China situation. Uh, so there it will be driven by triggers that come from outside, whereas the US one is about restabilizing to a higher cost uh, capital regime. Uh, there might be some amount of uh, you know the froth being taken off, uh, but underlying uh, company uh, balance sheets are in very good shape. 
and we should see uh, good uh, growth there. And yet, I've been reading a lot about head co headcount reductions in, in your industry. Is that a, a worrying sign of, of things to come? That has come more on the product side, the technology products side, the big tech area. Uh, they are uh, very volatile by nature. So when they see a demand upside, uh, they are uh, super aggressive in building out the capacity to capture the demand. So similarly, when they see a slight slowdown, they are also aggressive on the down cycle. But if you see it over the cycle, actually it's still, you know, considering the total hiring that happened, uh, the, what they're letting go uh, is just the top being co uh, cut off. So overall, I mean, that, and that's the product business because the product businesses are much more uh, volatile than the services business. Yeah. On the services side, uh, there is a very significant uh, growth momentum and that is continuing. All right, great. Well, that is an excellent point to leave it. Thank you so much for joining me today.